All right, guys, welcome back. So uh, today's video, I'm going to be just uh, trying to splice the uh, tubing and everything and hopefully get a, a really good start on building my sawmill trailer, you know, maybe even uh, get it almost finished. Uh, I got a lot of work to do, so I can't really kind of stand around and, and talk to you guys. I've got to hurry up and get this done uh, so I can try to get some uh, work lined up for it and uh, you know just get busy and, and try to make some money try to make it uh, try to make this work uh, as some of you already know I don't have a job anymore uh, so it's kind of just up to me to figure out how I'm gonna make a living and uh, here we are so uh, just kind of doing what I need to do to try to uh, provide for my family so I need to get this thing built try to get some work lined up for it so uh, I think the first thing I need to do is get started on making some gussets uh, or I'm sorry not gussets uh, some fish plates a fish plate is basically a plate uh, sort of a an oblonged octagon uh, that you would uh, put over the splice like whenever you butt two sticks of steel together you put a fish plate on either side of it weld that in and that helps strengthen that joint and uh, you know the, the hardest part is just getting that joint to actually be nice and straight uh, where you know they're not like this or like this I know that's pretty extreme but it's not that hard to get them straighter than that but um, you know getting them perfectly straight to where when you roll your sawmill down through there uh, you're cutting perfectly straight or extremely close to perfectly straight boards every time and so this sawmill is going to be 30 foot long uh, overall length that is extremely long for a sawmill trailer most sawmill trailers aren't that long but the reason I'm doing that is because uh, beams that are 20 foot long or so there's a premium for those because mills just simply usually are not that long you don't usually get logs that long and uh you know there are some people around here who have contacted me and wanted me to uh come out and mill on their property for them and uh you know i was never able to do that because i couldn't afford to make my mill longer now i just kind of bit the bullet and that's what we're doing we're making the mill longer and hopefully i can get a hold of those people and get some work lined up for the mill and the trailer and and myself so uh, here we go I think that's going to hold it.
it is. I don't know if you guys can see in there or not, but it's welded in there. And we'll just set that aside, let it cool off. Um, let's see. Oh, my allergies. Whew. Uh... I guess um, let's see I think the next thing I need to do is actually just get the uh, hold the steel laid out out here get it put together get it welded up that's what we're gonna have to do let's move you guys back over here kind of back here in the corner For those of you who are, are wondering, I'm using 7018. This is, uh, oh, I believe this is a low hydrogen 7018 from McKay. Uh, I bought this welding rod back in like 1998 and it's just been sitting in a cooler for all these years. And uh, I bought several boxes back in 98 when I bought my portable welder and uh, I think I'm down to a little over 50 pounds now <laughs> with all the stuff I've built. I had, uh, I think I had like four boxes uh, that I bought with my welder and I just kind of been going through that over the years, kept it in that cooler and you know that keeps the moisture from it pretty well. Works pretty good. Uh, I can't believe it's still running pretty decent from 98. Uh, I think I got a few pieces of like 6010 and some 6011. Yeah, here's some old 6010 right here. I don't use a whole lot of that. I don't like the weld that it leaves behind. I've got some uh, 7018 that's like, oh, I think that's a 16th or so. I don't know. It's not very big. Yeah. Most of what I'm burning here is an eighth inch. So 7018, low hydrogen, eighth inch. So this is two inch by five inch by three sixteenths wall and it's heavy. Uh, this is a 10 foot section. Uh, I bought three sticks of this. I cut one of them in half. And so we have two full 20 foot sticks right here and two uh, 10 foot pieces. And so we're gonna butt these together and uh, that's gonna be the main frame. Then we have uh, three sticks of the, I think it's th three by four, uh, quarter inch wall or quarter inch thick, uh, angle iron. Uh, one of them, of course, I cut it in half. So I have two, uh, 10 foot pieces of that. And that will be my track, uh, system. Uh, I'm not going to be using the stainless or galvanized, whatever that stuff is that, uh, Woodland Mills sends with, uh, their mill because 
you just can't buy that size. I mean, I might be able to buy it, uh, but it's a special order thing and I don't want to do that. I want something that is uh, readily available. If I had needed to replace a section of track on my mill or something, I, I want something that I don't have to, you know, order it and wait for a month for it to come in. So, uh, we did that. We did all that. Uh, now I got the, uh, a two by six is what we're using for our, uh, bunks. Uh, I will be using the, uh, three by six, uh, bunks that came with the mill. I'll be using those. There's five of those. And then I cut out six pieces of the two by six and then I've still got this piece right here of two by six. I'm going to be using that for the front two cross members because we're going to be putting a removable hitch into that. So you guys will, you'll get to see all of that in the future. And we've got, I think it's seven. We got six brand new uh, trailer jacks uh, for the sawmill. Uh, you'll have I, I kind of want to do four um, on each side so I mean I do have seven right now and so I'll have to go eventually buy another one when I can afford it um, and then we'll have eight so we'll be able to do four uh, down each side that's kind of what we're gonna plan for but I think we're gonna for right now we'll just leave the trailer jacks off of the very uh, back end of it and we'll just we'll space them out like they're gonna be uh, four on each side uh, down it. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. All I need to do is get my butt to work and get this thing done.
It's been a little bit since I've welded much. Uh, well, last time I welded was on the log arch trailer. There you go. Get a little splatter off here. That's where our paint job will look good. Ooh. There you go. I know it's not the best looking weld, but uh, you know, if I can do that good, uh, what, I'm way out of practice, obviously. Um, but if I could do that good with a stick welder, can you imagine how nice my MIG welds look or how nice my TIG welds look? I can make a TIG weld pretty much look like a machine done it. I mean, just absolute perfection. Uh, at least I've done it anyway before I don't know if I could still do it nowadays I'm a little bit shakier <laughs> my hands not even don't even look like it's shaking but it is a little bit uh, and I had some coffee this morning so yeah normally if I'm gonna be welding I won't be drinking coffee but I drank some this morning and I know there's probably a lot of you guys out there especially you pipeliners that could do a lot better job than I do but this video ain't for you guys, okay? I know, you guys are just like, you're super naturals and really great at it and everything. You, you're probably in practice, except for now that they closed down the Keystone Pipeline. <sighs> you know what I think about that. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's continue on. Just look at that. Isn't that a nice looking weld? I know, I know, I was moving too fast. Whatever.
All right, guys, so uh, I just got all the cross members that I have cut uh, tacked in. Uh, this one right here, this is a, a two inch by three inch by quarter inch wall. Uh, that one will be uh, welded in. I have to, I still have to cut it to the proper length. Um, and that's going to be where the axle goes. So basically, you're going to have your axle welded to the bottom of the frame here. And then you just step right up above that. And that's where that cross member is going to come in. <clears throat> and the axle is just going to be solid uh, to the frame. That traffic coming here. So hang on. You gotta be shitting me. That's the kind of crap I got to put up with. The dude's an ass. He comes by here, knows that I'm shooting video, and he's got to pull that. All the time. Does that just to mess with the audio. Probably watches my channel. He, uh, he's a complete douchebag. He, uh, you know, was riding my wife's ass one time. And he got fired for it because he was driving for my ex-boss and uh, driving his truck. And I knew, so I knew who he was. And uh, so then he comes by here like that and has to back up and then do it again. Freaking stupid. <sighs> All right, guys. So I got the cross members tacked in place. It took me quite a bit of, you know, squaring everything up, leveling and everything, trying to make sure everything is just perfectly the way it needs to be, not like twisted or tweaked or anything. So a ton of taking a little sledgehammer and measuring and bumping stuff and taking a laser level and, and just getting everything just perfect on this. You do not want to build a trailer that for your sawmill that's like this or like this or like you know uh you want it to be the most perfect straightest thing you've probably ever built uh you know if you have a like a laser level uh concrete slab that's you know big enough for your entire uh trailer that you're building you know, that's one thing where you can pretty much, you know, set it up on there and be good to go. Uh, you know, places like uh, Wood Miser or, you know, whatever, those places that build uh, full length sawmills that are welded up and everything. I would imagine they probably have a jig that they spent a ton of time and money getting it perfected uh, to where all they got to do is put their parts in, clamp them in, and they know that it when they weld it together, it's going to be in that same position when they pop when they pop it out of there it's going to be nice and straight and, and just perfectly straight and not twisted or anything like that so when you're working in these kind of conditions where your concrete is not perfectly flat it's not perfectly level and then a good 15 foot or so of your uh or 10 foot or so of your frame is out there over the rocks and you just have no idea about you know how level that is i got some boards underneath there kind of shimming it up luckily there's a slight grade to the rocks and it's not you know coming up it's actually going down uh because if it was coming up well that'd be one issue of water backing up but another issue of trying to build something here right so anyways i've got this cross member here that i still have to cut uh to the proper size and course we're going to have to put gussets and everything in because this is where the axle is going to go and that is uh what is it six six foot three i believe uh from the back end 
So we're going to have six foot three of tail swing. There goes the other neighbor again. I think that's all they do is just, you know, drive by here all day. I probably didn't put the part in where there was a few choice words said when the other guy came by here. Um, I cut that out because he came up here, he stopped, he backed up and did it again. And then that neighbor came by. It's so frustrating. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so anyways, yeah, a lot of work went into like just getting everything perfect on this thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping I didn't screw it up, honestly. Uh, so we've got, uh, these are our solid axles right here. And there will be, well, that's interesting. That's feels kind of gold. Yeah, that's better. I'll have to make sure there's no BBs or anything on this for welding it, but I'm pretty sure there's not. Anyways, um, so this is an axle stub end right here. Basically, I welded this piece of tubing on here. So it will insert into a receiver hitch tubing that will be welded to uh, the bottom of the sawmill trailer to make it mobile. Um, so uh, we can take the wheels off, right? Uh, that's just an added security thing. And it also gets your tires out of the way so you're not having to work around them if you're doing really long stuff or whatever, but primarily just a security deal. Here he comes again, it sounds like. That's him again, speeding as usual. You know, I, at this point, maybe I did put the uh, footage in where he did that before but that's the guy that was riding my wife's butt one day in a semi truck uh, and I got him fired because he was driving for uh, my ex boss and you know so I knew the truck and so I called my ex boss and said hey your driver uh, is riding my wife's butt I mean she had a picture of him where she took a picture in the rearview mirror where he was right on the back end of the minivan my kids were in the minivan he fired him on the spot he called him up said bring that truck back you're fired uh, all right guys so hopefully no more traffic will come by but all right so this here is the axle stub end and uh so i welded this piece of two inch on here quarter inch thick about the same as a, a receiver hitch you know like your your ball hitch or whatever um, so we'll get it figured out exactly where to drill the hole at in here to get these set just right um, that and it's it's just fine because this trailer is not going to be hauling any weight I'm not going to have any wood any logs or anything ever on this trailer the trail the wheels are only to trailer the trailer itself to get it from point A to point B with no weight on it other than the the saw head will be mounted at the very uh, nose of it and uh, or yeah it'll be at the very nose I'll have I'm going to make some brackets that come up and over the wheels to where when you take it all the way to the end those will be you know just the wheels will go inside this little cup thing that will keep those from bouncing out and then we'll uh, also probably have it strapped down and everything and uh, probably have some some latches or something where I can just kind of latch it down and, and lock it in to where I know it's not going to come off there. But, you know, we're going to have to just strap everything down just to be like an added, you know, security of just, you know, knowing it's not going to come off there. Um, so, anyways, this will be the axle. We got two inch or two and a half inch receiver tube that will actually be welded to the frame. And then this cross member right here, which is a two by three uh, by quarter inch wall. Uh, I still have to cut it to length to get it to fit in between there. But it will basically, it'll go right on top of this and be, also be a cross member at the same time. So this will, you know, the, the receiver hitch tube 
will be welded to the frame rail that goes the full length here and it'll be welded to that cross member so it's going to be basically the same thing as a solid axle uh, but the spindles are just you know pull out a i'll have a key pin you know a locking pin in there that takes a key so you know no one can just pull the pins out on me and uh, so they'll be locked in and uh you know so then i can just unlock them pull them out like whenever i get to wherever i'm going to be milling at or getting set up and everything when i get it jacked up and leveled and everything then i'll be able to pull that pin take my wheels and hubs and everything clear off of the the trailer and be able to mill without tires being there or whatever and then if i want I can leave that sawmill where it sets and you know lock the sawmill head down you know, put a, a cable lock or two on it or something something that just makes it harder to steal I'm not saying this is gonna you know make it theft proof or anything it's just gonna make it harder to steal uh, basically helping keep honest people honest uh, I've heard that saying a lot but uh, so it's getting pretty dark out here so I guess I'm not gonna be able to do any more until tomorrow i don't want to just go to town welding on this thing until i get all the cross members put in um, uh, i may i may cut some gussets uh to put in there just to kind of make it a little more rigid uh i don't i don't know once i get all that welded it's probably going to be pretty darn solid and i, I probably don't have anything to worry about you know it's, it's going to stay solid uh the other thing is is just absolutely making sure it's perfectly straight when we put our uh, angle iron on here the actual the track part that the wheels of the sawmill roll on uh, when we get that set on top of here and I start welding that down I'm gonna have to have the laser level out here and just really check it and make sure that it's perfectly straight we don't want to start off with you know that thing being bowed or anything like that so anyways guys Got more traffic coming, so I'm going to close this video out right here. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe, smash the like button, uh, ring the bell. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Third time's a charm, right? That guy's an ass.